G'day guys, how's it going? My name is Alex and welcome to Rangacorn Games. So today we're going to be unboxing the Collector's Edition for the remake of Resident Evil 2. Now the release date for Resident Evil 2 is Friday the 25th of January and unfortunately the Collector's Edition is sold out Australia wide. Now it was sold in Australia through both EB Games and JB Hi-Fi and would have set you back $429.95. It's rated R18 plus here in Australia due to its high impact violence, blood and horror, meaning only those 18 years and over can purchase the game. Now my chosen platform for the collector's edition is the PlayStation 4, but you can also purchase this on the Xbox One. Now I've been waiting for the remake of Resident Evil 2 for the longest time, and now that it's finally here, I've never been more excited to unbox something for you guys before. Hopefully you enjoy it. Alright, so first things first, let's have a quick look at the outside box. So on the front of the box here, it's got the title of the game being Resident Evil 2, as well as the fact that it is the Collector's Edition. Now the overall design of the Collector's Edition is similar to the in-game item box in which your character can store any in-game items you don't wish to carry, such as weapons, ammos or any healing items. Alright, so on the back of the box here, we've got a picture of what is included within the Collector's Edition, as well as the description down the bottom. So it includes a Resident Evil 2 Steelbook Edition, a limited edition RPD keys, an art book, a CD soundtrack, a 12-inch Leon figure, a Made in Heaven pin badge, a poster, and also the Deluxe DLC pack. Alright, so it is a one-player game. It requires 25 gigabytes minimum to download onto your PlayStation, and it is PlayStation 4 Pro enhanced as well. So that should definitely go down well with the upgraded graphics of the game. Alright, so now's the moment we've all been waiting for. So it did have four of these tabs here, which I've already removed. So it had two up the top and two down the bottom. So let's unbox this sucker and see what's inside. So one thing before I forget, it does have the RPD police badge here on the top of the box. Alright, so once you open up the box, the first thing you'll notice is the confidential folder here at the top. So we'll get that out and we'll have a look at that first. Well, it looks like it might be stuck in the box. So the first thing is the deluxe DLC pack. Next out of the box is this amazing blueprint of the Raccoon City Police Department. Up the top it shows a front view of the different levels you will explore while playing the game. And here at the bottom it shows the different rooms on level 1F. Now down the bottom here it says we pray that this new police station shall be an everlasting symbol of peace for all of Raccoon City. On the other side, it has a more detailed drawing to mark the reopening of the old museum as the brand new Raccoon Police Department in 1969. Alright, and there's nothing else in the confidential folder. All 
also included in the collector's edition is this art book which is designed like an in-game file. Now written on the front here it says written authorization required to read this file. So it's top secret so there may be some spoilers in here so just beware. So it looks like a lot of in-game designs, different aspects of the game, different maps. It actually feels really good, like good quality paper. So we've got some character designs here of Leon and we've also got Claire here. Some of the most recognisable statues of the game. Definitely a well designed art book for a great game. Next thing out of the box is this steel book, which as you can see is protected by this sleeve. So we'll have a quick look at the sleeve design. I'm absolutely loving the dark design on both the front and the back of the case. Now the front here as you can see shows a zombie with blood dripping from its mouth. The inside design shows an image of what I can only assume is Raccoon City after the zombies have taken control. And on the back of the case we can see the Umbrella Corporation logo which for me is one of the most recognisable symbols to come out of the Resident Evil game. Let's just say this still book is fast becoming one of my favourites. Here we have the Resident Evil 2 special soundtrack with a typewriter design on the front. So on the back it lists the different titles with 25 tracks in total included. Now my favourite part of this is the disc design. It's designed like the game's ink ribbons. This is why I'm loving this collector's edition because of the ongoing game theme and I absolutely love it. Now included in the collector's edition are these four RPD keys which are used throughout the game to open doors such as the autopsy room, the evidence and file rooms. Now these keys were only included in the Aussie in Europe collector's editions so unfortunately those in America and Canada missed out. Now they do look incredible and they look exactly how I remember them looking in the game. Now they feel like they are fairly well made and they are that little bit heavier than what I thought they would be. So in order we'll go through the keys. Alright so first we have the spade key. The next key is the diamond key. We have the heart key. And last out we have the club key. So I've always wanted to own these four RPD keys and it's one of the main reasons why I had to get my hands on this collector's edition. 
and they're also presented in this extremely nice looking box. Here we have the Made in Heaven pin. I love the fact that they've included this in the collector's edition as I always remember looking at the back of Claire's vest with this design on it. Now it is an updated design though and it's not the one I remember from the original game but I'm quite liking it. And on the bottom here, this must be the Leon S. Kennedy statue. Alright, so first thing out of the box is the base for the statue, which has the Raccoon Police Department logo here on the base. And on the side, it has Leon S. Kennedy. So it feels fairly light, but it does feel sturdy. And I don't think the statue will be going anywhere with this base. So next out of the box we have Leon S. Kennedy himself. I'll give you a bit more of a detailed look at the statue in a moment. But he does feel fairly sturdy. And he does look and feel like he's made out of fairly good quality material and the amount of detail which has gone into his uniform I'm very impressed with. I'm quite happy with this design. So he just slots into the base here. Got to put a bit of pressure into it to actually get him locked in place. So next out of the box we have his weapon and also his torch. So he's got a typical police pose here with the torch held out in front and the pistol up the top. And he's definitely showing some gun safety there with his finger off the trigger. First, let's have a look at the lower half of the statue. As you can see, it is extremely well designed and they have included a lot of details. They have also updated the design of the uniform to more closely resemble what a cop would wear nowadays. Leon can be seen wearing some knee pads for extra protection. He was also wearing his police issued belt, including his thigh holster. It also looks like his belt includes everything a cop would wear while performing his daily duties, from his radio, handcuffs and capsicum spray. I also noticed the fact that his belt is not attached to his underbelt, which is something I see a lot of in Australia. Now the amount of detail in the upper half of the statue absolutely amazes me. Leon can be seen wearing elbow pads just like he did in the original game. He is also wearing his RPD ballistic vest which looks like most of the vests I have seen with velcro straps used to hold it in place. The RPD patches seen on his shirt are also fairly detailed adding even more realism to the uniform worn by Leon. I also love the fact that Leon is holding his gun and flashlight in a manner that most cops would using the Harris technique. Last but not least is Leon's face and hair. Leon's hair is fairly similar to the way I remember it from the original game. Now the details on his face and hair are extremely lifelike which I absolutely love. 
I could definitely lose myself in those baby blues any day. All in all, I am really happy with the design and the amount of detail which has been put into this statue. Well done, Capcom. So there you have it guys, your first look at the Incredible Collector's Edition for the remake of Resident Evil 2. It costs $429.95 here in Australia and I'm absolutely stoked I managed to get my hands on one. So Capcom has done an amazing job with this collector's edition, not only going all out with the theme, but everything included is extremely detailed. Now in my opinion, if you can track this collector's edition down, I would definitely look at adding it to your collection. Especially if you're like me and you're a massive Resident Evil fan. If you like this video or found it informative, hit that like button and share it with your friends. If you have any ideas for future videos, please leave a comment below. So feel free to follow me on any of my social media accounts which can be found in the description. I'm currently trying some new and different things with my videos so any feedback would be very much appreciated. Also I'd like to give a huge thank you to everyone that has subscribed to my channel. And as always, I had fun making this video and hopefully you enjoyed watching it. Catch you later guys.